Welcome to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Okay, we're going to jump straight in. And Jake, I want you to tell us a little bit about where you grew up and and how you come to, to, to enter into the world of, of martial arts. Yeah, look, yeah, well, I grew up in uh, Albury in, in Samwell. It's just outside of Birmingham, um, part of like, the black country and that. So, yeah, um, basically, my dad was a, an amateur boxer and my granddad was a professional boxer. So I grew up around fighting a lot on the, on the television and stuff. Um, you know, my, my dad was a big fight fan. Uh, the UFC was kind of like just coming about, really. Well, it, you know, it had been about a few years, but, you know, using to like like the TOTs, early TOTs, um, yeah. BJ Penn and stuff. So it was about that era. Um, and I was watching that a lot on the TV and, and, and stuff with my dad. Also growing up at school and and that, I wasn't very good at school. Um, you know, I had no interest in... in in the education, you know, I mean, I, I probably could have, could have been good at like, you know, your maths and English, but because I had no um, interest in it, obviously I weren't very good at it. Um, you know, when it comes to like sports at school, you know, all the kids was into the football. I was never into it, you know, um, probably on the fact that, you know, my dad weren't into it either. So um, as a kid, I used to get into a lot of fights at school. Um, and I just really enjoyed fighting, even as a young kid at school. I just enjoyed fighting. Um, I got to a certain age, about 12, 13 years old, kept on to my dad to take me to the gym. Uh, so he took me down to a local jiu jitsu gym. He, 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 he didn't think like I'd stick at it, uh, but basically, I never missed a day, and then. You know, I progressed on, started to do a bit of boxing, then uh, moved on to the MMA, and uh, here I am. Yeah. Thank Firstly, you. Jake, I mean, I'm loving the beard, by the way, mate. That's <laughs> that. That is looking good. You're not as baby faced as the last time we saw you uh, in the octagon. The beard's looking good, man. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, in terms of like motivation and all that that kind of stuff, you're saying you know you you weren't motivated to do the the English and the maths and or football or anything like that. You knew what you wanted to do, and I'm really interested in that because it's rare that you meet people that from a child know what they want to do. And there's obviously that famous clip now of you on like your birthday. You've got like a UFC cake or, or whatever it is. <laughs> Got there, you, you said I've said you say in interviews you wanted to know from you you knew what you wanted to do from the age of nine. You wanted to be like a UFC fighter, and and me as an actor, I I I can't tell you how young I was. My my nan before she passed used to tell me that I was about three years old, and she said, "What do you mm. want to do when you grow up?" And I was like, "Actor." And I don't know why. I don't yeah. know where it came from. None of my parents were involved in the industry. Nothing like that. I just wanted to do that, and that was my goal all the time and like you i had very little interest in anything else that's just all i wanted to do until now because i'm now talking to you and wanting to you know i'm interested in mma so much but where do you, where did it come from was it solely from your your dad oh, i know your granddad was a pro boxer wasn't he yeah he was yeah but where, but, but obviously boxing slightly different to to mma so where where did this passion for being a ufc fighter come from I think it was like born into me from from God because as as from as long as I can remember, all I've wanted to do is fight. But saying that, it's probably been the only been been the only thing I've been good at. And I guess you enjoy what you're good at. Yeah. When when I was at school, this might sound crazy, but like how I created friendships and stuff was through fighting. So being the kid that no one wanted to mess with, you get me, you better be friends with Jake because you don't want to piss him off because he'll mm. whack everyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's as a very young kid. Yeah. I was always into the fighting and all my family were into the fighting. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I think it's inbred into me. You know, it's it's in my genes. Did and you... I can't help but want to fight. I feel like, just like, you know, an, a bloodthirsty animal, that's all I want to do is fight all the while. All I think about is fighting, and all I thought about my whole entire life is fighting. I was a young kid at school, 
you know, younger than 10 years old, thinking to myself in class, I don't need to listen to this shit. I'm going to be UFC champion one day. You know, I've always fought it. I got all my friends into the UFC. Then no one knew what the UFC was when, when I was a kid in primary school. No one knew what it was. They all used to come around my house and watch the tapes because I had the tapes because my dad used to tape them. You know? He used to put them on. We used to watch old school Tank Abbott and everything. Me and the, me and the kids uh, from school. And then we'd go and fight in the garden, get each other in our bars and shit like that. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Jake, uh, you know, uh, when, when I was a kid, and, you know, there'd be any kind of conflict. You know, I was uncomfortable with it. And, and you know, you get that, that fight or flight kind of sensation. I'm presuming that was, did not apply to you. You know, was, was you just, com was you just so comfortable in that environment? Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed fighting even like, um, even, you know, it's a bit easier to fight as in like a, a, a school or a street fight if some, if it just happens randomly. It's a bit harder of a fight when you say, all right, let's meet at the the school gates at yeah. four o'clock and you got to think about it all day. But I used to thrive in their moments of, oh, oh I'd, I'd do it like a game plan, like it was a training camp. Oh, I'm going to go in and do <laughs> You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'd thrive on their moments and... And I, I, I enjoy, it's just something I enjoy. I just enjoy fighting. It's hard to explain. Um, I don't know where it comes from. I think it's in my, just in my DNA. Uh, yeah. I used to say as a kid, I was put on this earth by God to be a fighter. That's, and, I, and, and, and I've always believed that. When I was a kid, I used to say that to myself. I was put on the earth for one reason, one reason only, to be a fighter. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's what I believe. So, yeah, and, and you had you had a lot of success early. You you know, you, you you became a, a cage warriors champion, and you know w when you become a cage warriors champion, you know the UFC eyes are going to be on you. But were you surprised that you didn't just get offered a contract and you had to go and do the the Dana White Contender Series? Yeah, well, if you look at my pro career, I mean, I can't. I deserve to be in the UFC really before I was even cage warriors champion. Yeah. Uh, because very early on in my career, I was fighting world champions. Like I travelled to South Africa to fight for the EFC for that for that world title um, against a guy who'd, who'd competed in the UFC. So and I beat him, dominated him, and and I fought on Bellator. Then I knocked out Sajak, who was the number one guy in in the in the UK uh, in Europe. Um, you know, so I kind of even thought I, I deserved it before I even got the Cage Warriors title. Yeah, and then to get the Cage Warriors title. Uh, you know, I also won it off a champion. I didn't win no vacant title. I won it mm -hmm. off a champion, so uh, domination as well. So I thought, yeah, for sure, I'm going to go to the UFC. I was very shocked when the only offer I got was contender series. I was like, oh. but I'm I'm glad that I had to go through contender series now because the more experience you get before you get in the UFC, the better. Yeah. Because it's all the all the best fighters in the world in the UFC. It's the it's the champion from Canada. It's the champion from America. It's the champion from Brazil. You only fight champions over here. So the more experience you can get, the better. And in terms of the contender series, you've probably talked this to death, but we have to ask. Um, Dana White has a famous quote. He, he broke all his rules to uh, to sign you. You know, you, you missed weight by just one pound. The first time yeah. ever in your career you'd ever missed weight. Um but then there was apparently something going on behind the scenes where I don't know if it was Hunter Campbell, Mick Maynard, whoever it was, were advising Dana, don't sign this guy. Yeah. Can you shine any light on what it was that was happening or what people perceived to have happened that led to people thinking, even if he's that good, we still don't want him here? Because Dana, as he said, he broke all the rules to, to sign you. So can you sh shed any light on that? Yeah, well, obviously I missed the weight um, by one pound, but kind of what happened with that was, um, you know, I was offered a contender series fight, which I which I took. Um, I was training for the fight, and then the fight got scrapped because I couldn't get a visa in time. Uh, the UFC told me or told my management um, that I will not be fighting on contender series. Um, then my visa come. And then they offered me a fight on two weeks' notice. And you you can't like you can't turn the UFC down. Yeah. 
and I was, you know, thirty five pounds off the weight when they when when they when they, when they told me on two weeks, and I was like, oh shit. So I would have actually made the weight, um, yeah. but it was like a timing issue. I just ran out of time, type of thing. Uh, I also had like a situation where I had one pound left to cut, um, and uh, they give me one extra hour to cut the weight. But someone from out the UFC told me to go and sit on a chair or something like this. So I went and sat down. And then another UFC official came over to me and was like, why are you sitting there? You need to be cutting weight. You need to be losing. So I ended up with only 20 minutes to lose this one pound. So I couldn't start sweating again. And I couldn't lose this one no. pound. So that's what happened with the weight cut. I haven't missed weight since. Um you know, I am a quite big big guy for the weight. I do cut a lot of weight. I do walk around uh, heavy. But so do most of the guys in the UFC now. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, when it comes to fighting, if you're along the same sort of level, always the bigger guy always wins. You know what I mean? So everyone's always trying to be the bigger guy. Um, I haven't missed weight since. Actually, all my opponents since that fight have missed weight. They have, I'm yeah. You're right. Three. Of my opponents have missed weight, uh, which I believe was a strategic uh, thing. But yeah, going back to contender series, I think um, I had some some sort of like the driver had some sort of problem with me. Um, I can't really remember what it was over. I think like he'd complained about me, um, but I, I I can't really remember what why why he complained. About me now, but anyway, he complained about me. The, the driver did. I think also one of the uh, one of the staff complained about me because I kept uh, because basically they give you some spending money. The UFC do, and I was broke at the time, and she had, and they hadn't sent me my sending money. Um, so I was on to her every day. Oh, can you send me my sending uh, my uh, spending money, yeah. please? Because I had no money. I'm I got to feed my corner man and all this, and I got no yeah. money. On. You know what I mean? I'm I'm like panicking now I'm thinking I'm gonna be in Vegas with no money. Uh so I was on to him about my money. And I think she they took it as like a disrespect like like yeah. I'm on to him like like her. And I think that they reported me for, for it. But even my management said to me, uh who manage a lot of top guys that says uh you're the, <laughs> no one's has, no one's ever been complained on more than you other than Conor McGregor. <laughs> oh my god! And I was like, "Oh no, this what a way to start!" Like you know, I've my my dreams to get in the UFC, and I mean, I'm I've got beef with everyone. I'm like, "Oh shit," you know what I mean? But <laughs> you know, what I mean, I didn't mean mean it how it went, but uh, you know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. Well, you can tell what it meant to you to to be in that moment in time. I mean, I've gone back and I watched. Uh, your fight on the contender series and then how they announced it afterwards. The emotions are really pouring out of you. You're, you're, you're sat there trying to hold it all in and it's still coming out as Dana's kind of talking through. And it sounds at one point, like maybe he's going to say, you're not going to get the contract. And when he says you get it again, the emotions just come pouring out of you. You sort of collapse to the floor at one point. You can really see how much work you've put in for it and, and how passionate you are about doing it. Um, can you remember what was going through your head in those moments before he said, come over here, you've, you've got a contract? Yeah, well I, well, I thought that I'd messed it up for myself. I thought, you know, I've missed I've missed the weight, which, which you know, is very unlike me to miss. Uh, well, I've never missed weight before. I've never missed weight since. Um, I've had actually harder weight but since that fight. Um, but I've actually given my, my, myself more time. Um, you know what I mean? So, you know, I thought, oh, I've messed it up. Not only have I missed the weight, but I've like said something stupid to someone, you know what I mean? Or done something. This is what I was thinking. And and I, I've, I've messed it up for myself here. Yeah. Um, I knew that the performance was a pretty, a pretty decent performance. It weren't my best yeah, was... performance. Um, but it was a good performance, as in, I was very aggressive. I come after the guy. I tried to knock him out. Um, he took me down. I tried to submit him straight away. Yeah. Um, and then when I took him down, I just finished him straight away, which I think proved that I could have done that from the first round, from early on in the fight. I could have just done that if I wanted to. 
but I wanted to come out and have an exciting fight. So, you know, I thought that the fight was um, something that Dana would like, but I was hoping Dana would say to me, we'll have you back on another contender series in a couple of weeks' wow. time, and you can put it right. But when he says, you've got the contract, it was like, yes, all my dreams had come, a lot, you know, half of my goal had been achieved. You know what I mean? My yeah. goal to get in the UFC, my next part is to be the world champion. I ain't just being here to be, to count up the numbers. But it was a big milestone in my journey. It was a big, you know, moment like, man, I've done it. I've got in the UFC. You know what I mean? No one ever in my, in my neighborhood or, or my area has ever done something like that. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, now I'm in the UFC. I was so happy and it, the emotions just took over me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, no, um, it's an amazing thing to see. It's like, you, it really is like a kind of physical embodiment. Like it's a movie scene. It's a, you know, you're there, you don't think it's going to happen. And then it does, the emotions are pouring out of you. It's it's a really beautiful moment. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a, an amazing moment of my life. And, and I, I, I'm very thankful to Dana White. He took a chance with me. Um, he took a chance for me, like like you say, everyone was telling him not to not to sign me. Um, but Dana White knows his talent. He knows talent when he sees talent. And he said to me uh, privately and stuff that he's got very high, high aspirations for me. So, and I think I've proven that in the UFC so far with um, how, how entertaining my thoughts have been. Um, you know, and how I've come out, and you know, all my wins are finished. So. I think, you know, I've proven him right and I'm going to continue to prove him right. Absolutely. Um, you know, you talk about sort of visualising, you know, that moment when you was a kid and, and, and just wanting to, you know, get to the UFC, get into the UFC. Like, how much of that... And talk talk me through, Jake, what was going through your mind when you get to the point where you're in the UK and you're walking out to a sold-out O2 and, and then you do what you do as well, like... How much did like just tell us what happened that night and how you know what was going through your mind because it was a remarkable performance, a fantastic finish, and it must have just meant the world. Yeah, well, um, you know, I hadn't fought it in front of a crowd since 2019 when I fought on Bellator um, in the free arena in Dublin, and and fought in front of an arena since then. All my fights on Cage Rises, obviously during COVID. And then my my three fights, um, you know, contender series and the two UFC was all in the apex, so it wasn't in front of a crowd. So fighting in front of um, the O2 London, you know, when I come out, I just felt like a modern day gladiator. I felt like a gladiator, and I was like, yeah, this is what, oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I want. You know, it felt better than fighting in in the apex. Um, the apex feels more like a glorified spa. Like I just walk, was walked out, and I just didn't feel anything. If I got, if if um, I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't feel anything. But when I come out in the O2, I felt like a, a modern day gladiator. I could, you know, it felt amazing to me. You know, it made me feel even more. You know, what getting there and hurt the guy. You know what I mean? Um. And then when I finished him and the crowd is all cheering for me, it just makes me feel like everyone's here just for me. Even though, they, you know, they're probably out there, they're there for Leon, they're there for the other fights, but it made me feel like everyone's just turned up here to watch me. I'm, I'm You know what I mean? It, it was uh, yeah. an amazing feeling. Um, I think in that moment they are there for you, aren't they? Sense. Like it's like that's the thing. That's the that's the thing. I think with fighting at home, as it were, you know, when whenever you fight in the UK, as soon as you walk out, it doesn't matter if you're the main event or whether you are, you know, the first guy on the prelims. As soon as you walk out, and the vast majority of that crowd are from the UK, and you're the UK fighter, they are there for you in that moment. And when you drop Malcolm Gordon with that unbelievable body shot and the crowd is roaring that's you you've caused that they are there for you in that moment yeah 100 percent. i mean i wouldn't even I, I like even fighting in front of a crowd was booing me i gotta be completely honest uh you know when i fought in in south africa i mean that that was a few thousand people there three or four thousand 
probably more. You know, I don't know how many people's there. Um, and they always booing me and always saying, you're going to die and all this, you know, saying all this stuff to me. And, and I felt good then. I actually felt <laughs> good then. I was walking out and I'm like, yeah, you can say what you want. I want to come in there and destroy you, boy. So, you know, obviously I'd rather fight in a place where they're going to cheer me. But I don't mind if they boo me. As long as I'm fighting in front of a crowd. You know what I mean? I enjoy the fighting in front yeah. of the crowd. That's what I got in it for. You know what I mean? That's what I got into the game for to fight, you know, in front of the people to be fighting like a gladiator in front of the people. I don't care if they boo me or they cheer me. Obviously, I'm very uh, appreciative of all the cheers and all the UK fans getting behind me. But I wouldn't even mind fighting someone in their backyard in, say, Brazil, where they're more calling me names and stuff. Um, you know, so I, I enjoy that. I also like the bad guys in whenever I watch a film. <laughs> or, <laughs> when I was growing up, I always like, you know, the the bad boys, you know what I mean? So it was like, I don't mind being cheered or booed, but it was a great feeling for sure. Do you get nervous, Jake? I mean, everyone gets nervous, but I don't really get overly nervous because it's something I enjoy to do. You know, I mean, like, yeah, I get nervous when I'm about to go out because, like, even though you know what's going to happen, like, I think I know what's going to happen in my head. You never know what's going to happen in a fight. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, so there's that bit of nerves of, like, oh, you don't know what's going to happen. I ain't nervous of getting hurt. I ain't nervous in breaking my eye sockets, breaking my nose, breaking my hand. I ain't, I ain't nervous in that. I get a bit of nerves of like you know you don't know what's going to happen in a minute you're about to go into a fight um but fighting to me is like it feels feels normal like it feels normal it feels like it don't feel like a lot to me you know what i mean uh, i enjoy it um you know when i'm done fighting i always say to my opponent, man i wish i could do that again i wish i could do that again <laughs> And then, and then you know they're laughing at. And then I think to myself, oh, I don't want to do the weight cut though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do the weight cut. Uh, but no. you know, I wish I could do that again next weekend. You know what I mean? Or what? Give me ten minutes. Let me have a, a chill, and then let me go back in and do it again. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of uh, the O2, one of the big talking points coming out of of the O2 was uh particularly from the, the 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 chats in the media pre and post the fights was your relationship towards Mohamed Makayev and it seems like and we put up something about this while ago there's a clip of you from I don't know if it's like early in the regional scene or even maybe the amateur days talking about Makayev so it seems like this kind of the beef between the two of you have has been going on for quite some time can you tell us where that started and why that is the way it is you know it just started really i mean it, i wouldn't I'd, i wouldn't say it started as like any beef it just started as you know i was like the number one amateur in the country at the time um he was an up-and-coming kid where you know he was winning a few fights and getting a lot of credit i was looking for opponents so i called him out for a fight and that was about it really i just wanted to fight the best amateurs around he was on a win streak um and getting a lot of attention so I was like who's this kid who keeps getting a lot of attention I want to fight him I want to smash his face and, and that's where it that's where it come from um you know basically he turned me down quite a few times at amateur um I'm not saying him in particular uh turned me down but his team turned me down he was with a different gym at the time he was with team carbon at the time um they turned me down quite a few times um do you believe obviously... that they were sort of protecting him from you? Is that what you, you think? Yeah, you know, I was an hard, I, I am an hard fight for him. I was an hard fight for him then. I'm an hard fight for him now. I even harder fight for him now. Um, and that, they didn't want that for him at the time. I obviously, I went pro. He stayed amateur. He did what he did in the amateurs. Uh, you know, you know, I was, I was winning in my pros. He went pro, signed to like Brave. And then was calling me out to fight him on Brave when I was signed to Cage Warriors. I was like, listen, mate, can I come out? 
How can I fight you? I'm brave. I mean, I'm signed to Cage Warriors, you idiot. Um, it was basically any time I'd have any success and was winning fights, he'd try to use my name to publicise him. So he never wanted to fight me until I was in Cage Warriors and then he knew he, I couldn't fight him. And then when I got on Contender Series, then he wanted to fight me again. When I signed to the UFC, then he wanted to fight me again. When I lost and he went above, above me, they, they, now he don't want to fight me again. Um, but, you know, it, it, weren't, it weren't like no crazy beef for me. It was just an, a, a kid who's a bit of an idiot in what he says some, sometimes. He says some dumb things like, um, come and fight him, I'm brave. How can I fight you, I'm brave? I'm signed to Cage Warriors. Like, he just says some dumb things. But um, when I've met him as a person, I've never met him until I uh, fought on this London card. He's and was there an altercation him. at the hotel? Yeah. yeah basically, what happened there? Well, basically, now I've met him, I know I know what he is now. He's just a bully. That's all he is. Yeah, he puts on the, his glasses for these interviews and goes off all like this nice guy. But he's nothing but a bully. That's all that kid is, yeah? And I'm going to smash his face in for, for, for these sort of things. But anyway, I was at the... Um, at, like, the the bar or something like that, trying to get a warm my breakfast up or get a coffee or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. And um, he just comes out the lift and he comes walking over to me um, and then just tries to get in my face and talk shit. Uh, and the security and, and that got got in the middle. Uh, well, my dad actually got in front of him at first and, and like was telling him, hey, you know, back away, back away, whatever. And then the security got involved pushed him away and sent him on his way, but, um, you know, we can't be fighting in the hotel like crazy people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he wants to fight me in the hotel, but he don't want to take a fight with me. So, work that one out for me, because I can't work it out. Um, so, yeah, he wants to fight me in the hotel, but don't want to fight me in the cage, so. But you can't avoid it for too long. It's going to eventually come to him, and I'm going to end up fighting him and end up smashing him. So, but... What did you make of his fight against Jafal Filo? Um, he, he was arguably losing the fight until he finished him. The second round was a very close round, which you could say Mark Ev won based on the fact that he was in London and that it took him down the last 20 seconds to go. The third round... You know, he nearly got his leg ripped off. If he hadn't have finished him with that rear naked choke, he could have lost a decision. Um, he fought, and obviously, a nobody. He fought a debut. After saying that, I won't fight Jake Hadley because he lost in, his, in the UFC. He ends up fighting a debut guy. Worked that one out for me. Um, I think, he, you know, he looked horrible. He looked like a guy who's coming off a shoulder injury and, and done no training. He looked like that guy. What did but you um... Makhiev's never a guy who has cardio anyway. His striking looks looked horrible. He was shooting from the other side of the cage. You know, he's all right once he gets out of here. He's decent. He, his jiu-jitsu looked okay, but overall it was a terrible performance. You know what I mean? Overall terrible performance. You don't give him any credit for not uh, tapping to the, the knee bar thing? Did oh, you yeah, give him any credit for that or, or not really? He's a tough mother... You know, he's a tough guy. I mean, I was saying I was watching the fight actually on the bus on the way back from my fight. And I was saying, oh, what a tough guy, what a tough kid. You know what I mean? He's a tough guy to take that um, and not tap. Um, you know, I thought he, was, he, he would have tore his ACL and been completely out of the game for a long while. Um, you know, so, you know, I give him credit for not tapping. Well, talking about tapping, what, what what did you make of the the, the phantom tap that, that might have been in in the uh, in the opening round? What did you make of that? I, I, I don't think honestly. I don't think he he, he, he tapped. I don't think he tapped. Um, I don't think if he, if he won't tap from a a knee bar, why is he going to tap from a guillotine or whatever or shoulder lock or whatever it was? Mm. Um, I don't think he tapped. Um, and even if he did do a phantom tap, pretended to tap. So that the guy would let go. That's not on Makhiev. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That's on the ref. You know what <laughs> I mean? Whatever. And, and on the opponent. 
He shouldn't be letting go. I ain't, if I get anyone in a submission, I ain't letting go until the referee pulls me off of him. The guy can be tapping as much as he wants. You know, I mean, he could be whatever. His arm could be broken in half. I ain't letting go until the referee pulls me off. So, if Filio let go of... Because like, I've heard Marquez say, like, he had, at one point, he let go of the submission and then put it back on because he thought Marquez tapped when he didn't. Um, that's on Filio. The guys had 15, 16 pro fights. How can you not know? You know, you don't stop until the referee pulls you off. You know what I mean? Mm. So... Obvious... No, obviously it seems like you would like the Makaya fight at some point. I don't know how his recovery is going because his knee must be in in some sort of trouble. Do what is next for you? Do you know who you want to fight, when you want to fight? What's next for you? Well, like I say, going back to the Makaev thing, Makaev's calling opponents out for July, so I should imagine his knee is okay. He's also come out and said he's only got a high grade two MCL tear. What a lot of people don't know is I actually did the same injury in the Nascimento fight in the first round within the first minute of that fight. But no one knows because I weren't hovering around like a pussy and, and letting everyone know. So you're the first person I've, I've told that. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. So so you I, injured the same injury in, in the Nascimento fight, which was your, your debut that you loved. You, you did that in the first round? First minute. No one knows about it. Wow. So you hover around and then play off, get on the, you know, whatever. Um, but Makhev says he'll be ready for July. Um, I think he should take some time out to be honest. I do. Uh, he's got that many injuries. I think you know, if anything, his performances have declined since his debut in the UFC. He had a great mm -hmm. performance against Durden, a decent performance against Johnson, terrible, terrible performance against Gordon. Gordon nearly beat him as well, he had him on, on ropes as well. And an even worse performance against Filio. His performances are going down and down and down and down. You know what I mean? So if he does fight in July, you know, if he don't, you know, I'd, he's gonna end up. He's gonna end up getting beat by someone. So I'm not. I hope I can get him. I hope I can get a hold of him soon. Um, he wants to fight in July. If they offer me the Makhair fight, I will fight in July and get him get him done. Um, if I don't get offered Makhev, uh, hopefully I can get a, a high-ranking opponent like a Bruno Silva or uh, Ode of Sane or or someone of, of, of relevance. If not... Would that probably... be in July? Would you like that in, in July? Yeah, well, like I say, if the UFC are going to offer something like that for July, I'll fight in July. If not, um, I'll probably... You know, take the July card off and look to come back in in um, September or August, September, late mm. August, September, based on a few injuries that I've gone into that fight with and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, with the right fight, I'm willing to fight through my injuries uh, to to advance my career. But if not, if they're just going to offer an average dude, a normal guy, then uh, I'll wait. Yeah. I want, I want to go back to uh, the Otis. We always like to ask um, guests this, Jake. Um, you get a spectacular win. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you've mentioned that you know you, you're not a fan of weight cut. So when you when you celebrate, how do you celebrate, and what is it that you instantly gravitate towards eating? Well, you know, I don't, I'm not a guy who gets. I don't get fat. You, you know what I mean. I'm not a guy who gets fat. I'm not a guy who gets out of shape. Um, you know, you know, I, I I'll eat whatever for a week. You know, what I mean, I, I'm not a guy who overly celebrates either. I don't, you know, you know, very rarely drink. You know what I mean? I, I think my last fight was the only fight I went out after the fight. I went out a week later and went to Leon's after party. You know, what I mean, I only went because it was Leon's after party. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't drink. I don't. You know, a lot of these fighters drink and do drugs and whatever. You know, you, you put them on a pedestal, but they do do that. Um, you know, I don't get fat. Yeah, I'll go out and might have a, a burger and that or whatever. But my, I, I get heavy. I'm big for the weight, but I'm muscular. I ain't, you know, whatever. You know, I have to cut 30, 35 pounds or whatever to make the division from the beginning of the camp to the end. But it's muscle. If you look at me when I start a camp, I look better than most of these guys 
when they're when they're on fight week. You know what I mean? Um. Yeah. So I mean, I'm eating clean now. You know, I'm I'm getting up. I'm having my oats. You know, I'm I'm having my chicken and rice. Whatever I'm having. You know what I mean? Hmm. You know, I might have a little cheat on the weekend or whatever. Um. But for the most part, I'm eating clean year round. You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, I've got to have a. I've got to be like anyone else. I've got to have my bit of a break away from fighting, another bit of a cheat or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know. But no, what is to... the cheat? What's the favourite cheat? You know what? You always crave different things when you're cutting weight. When you're cutting weight, right. and that you're like, you're like, oh man, I can't wait to have a burger. And then, and then the next day, like you're like, oh, you're on flipping the Instagram looking at. Domino's pizza, and you're like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pizza now. I want a pizza, and then, and then you have your fight, and you weigh in, and you have your fight, and then you're like, oh, I don't really fancy anything now. Like, kind of <laughs> like goes, it kind of like goes away. You know what I mean? And then you have your it's fight. when you when you can't have it, you really want it, and when you can yeah. have it, you're like, oh, I'm not fast. Exactly, and when you have your first bite of your burger, you're like, oh, is this what I've been dreaming of for like weeks? You know, you're like, oh. I don't even care about it now. And then when you start camping, you're coming towards the end, you're always like, oh, next next time I'm going to make sure I go on and all you can eat and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You never end up doing it. But you always think to yourself, oh, cool, wait to Monday when I've weighed in and I had my fight and I can celebrate with some burgers and this and that. Yeah. And then, but you never end up doing it for some reason. It's like they, every fighter will tell you the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jake, what... What job would you have if you weren't a fighter? If you didn't make it to fire, what what would you be doing for employment? That that's an odd one because, like I said before, all I've ever dreamed about was fighting. Yeah. And and you know when you they used to say to me at school, uh, you know, you need a backup, you need a backup, and all this stuff to me, and I was like, nah, I don't need no backup. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> so I don't know what I'd do if I were a fighter. I'd probably be mis- I'd, I'd probably be miserable as anything. And, yeah. <laughs> um, it's because it's like all I've like dedicated myself to, and all I thought about. I, I couldn't see what I'd be be doing other than fighting. I, I don't. I, I couldn't live a normal nine to five life like my dad's doing yeah. all his life. Well, my dad worked longer than that. You know, yeah. longer hours than them. Tarmac in the roads, proper graft. You know what I mean. Um, if anything, I got a lot of respect for them type of people. You know what I mean? Who go and do that yeah. that sort of jobs because I couldn't, I couldn't do them. You know what I mean? The sales fighters of a uh, are tough men. Yeah. They're tough men. People like my dad who do them six in the clock in the morning till six o'clock on night every night, grafting the bollocks off. They're they're tough men. You know what I mean? Us fighters, we do what we love uh, for a living. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, that's not tough to me. That I enjoy. It, yeah. You know what I mean? So but I couldn't I couldn't see what I'd be doing if I weren't fighting. I can't see my my I'd have to say probably time in the roads. But I, no, I just I just couldn't do it, man. I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> well, let, let's just talk about the, the flyweight division, because it's, it's an interesting one at the moment. We saw a, a, a huge win for uh Royal last night. Um Figgy apparently now not moving up. Rumoured to be fighting Cape uh, uh, 290. Tell us, Jake, how you see the division sort of playing out for the rest of this year? Um, how, how I see it playing out? I, um... Well, you've got Pantoja versus uh, Moreno, mm. haven't you, for the belt. Who yeah. do you think takes that one? I mean, that's Pantoja's two up, really, including the uh, two ultimate two fighter fight. It's an hard one. He's two up on him, but. I think Moreno's made a lot of improvements since um since then fights. You know, he was pretty young when he had them fights. I I don't know how young he was when he was in the ultimate fight when he thought that was probably like 22, 23 or something. Um, you know, so I think Moreno's got a lot better. What I can say about the flyweight division though, is that it's so new, because I know they 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 had it for a while, but then they got rid of it and now they've had it back. The division's so new that they kind of like the rankings are kind of like messed up in a way. It's not some of the guys in the top fifteen are not there because they're actually top fifteen. They're there because there was they've been 
they've been in the division longer. You know what I mean? Like some guys, um, like I don't, I don't like. You see, in other divisions, like you could say, like the top fifteen are on a different class to the guys who are unranked. But in flyweights, I'd say the top fifteen are no different to the unranked fighters. At least the first five of the top fifteen. Um, so like you know, like there's some guys in that division that, that are in the top fifteen only because they've been in the division longer. Some of them haven't mm. fought in years. You know what I mean? Um, yep. Actually, three of the top 15 are only in the top 15 because they've got a win over Malcolm Gordon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not my phone over. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so... The division's kind of like all up in the air, you know what I mean? Like one one or two good wins and you, you, you're in the top 15. One or two good wins... <laughs> In the yeah. top of you could be fighting for a belt. So it's kind of yeah. all up for grabs. It um, does feel a bit like it. it's a division that can be disrespected at times. Like last night to me was a prime example. You've got Nicolau versus Royval, both I think either, at least in the top six, I, I think they both were. The winner of that could be looking at a title shot next. And they've put it on the prelims. It's like, and there's other fights, like heavyweight fights that are like unranked guys that just are nowhere near the quality of the flyweight division. Do you feel like the flyweights are maybe a little bit disrespected because of size when actually when you look at it skill for skill, it's one of the best divisions in the UFC? Well, skill, in my opinion, skill for skill, it's the best division or the, mm. the, the history of any sort of combat sports. The smaller the weights, the more skill is invo involved in it. Um, the more size and power, the heavier you go up. It's the more size or power. So there's some, you know, also with the flyweight division being so new, they've only got like 45 people in the old division. So they're all top level guys. There's very, there's, there's very little fat on the division. There's very little wasted yeah. on the division, division compared to other divisions. You look at and you say, What's this guy doing in the UFC? He couldn't even win a fight in KFC, no matter about UFC. <laughs> the, the flyweights, there's very little wastage. Um, I do think we're 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 like mistreated in a way where like rivals on the prelims. I wouldn't I wouldn't be as as shocked if it was um like a boring fighter like your Mamid Makhev who's on the prelims. But when you've got a guy who comes out and tries to smash you, tries to hurt you, you know, if he takes you down, he's trying to submit you, he's trying to cave your head in, he's trying to, you know, he's a real exciting fight. I mean, to put him on the prelims, I mean, even Dan White said after he says, we, you know, we messed up by putting him on the prelims, he yeah. should never be on the prelims. I can understand flyweights who are boring, which are very few and far between. Um, but there are a few. Makiev, Tagur, there's a few boring flyweights. Um, you know, maybe put them on the prelims, but um, Roy Val, I think he should have been higher up on the card, like you say. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've only got a couple more questions for you, Jake, if that's all right. And, and one of them is uh, your thoughts on a, a big fight that's coming up. We're asking all our guests at the moment what they think of it. Uh, it's Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler. Have you got any opinion on how you feel that one goes? <sighs> One thing I will say about McGregor, yeah, is, is he's got all the money in the world. You know what I mean? Uh, he's got silk pajamas or whatever. You know the saying they like to say about the silk pajamas. He's got the silk pajamas. He's got flipping. You know, he's got everything, but he still wants to get up and and, and go out and fight. That's a dangerous guy. You know what I mean? When you've got all the money in the world, you'd never have to work another day in your life. You, you. Your children's children's children never has to work a day in their life. That's how much money he's got. And he still wants to go out there and get into a, a fight and trade blows with a guy. You know what I mean? That's a dangerous guy. So um, a lot of people who say, look, McGregor's motivation and this and that has died or whatever. I don't think that because it, that's a guy with all the money in the world and he still wants to fight. He's obviously doing it because he loves it. He ain't doing it for money. He's doing it for the love. You know what I mean? So that's a dangerous guy, but, um, you know, he's put on a lot of muscle mass, which, you know, stiffens you up, slows you down a little bit. 
but then again, Chandler's also got that, you know, sort of body frame. I hope McGregor wins, but we don't know what McGregor's going to look like because he's had so long at the game. Yeah. And, he's put and so that much injury, on. that yeah, leg injury. snapping injury, that's a bad one. Yeah, having that injury, what's his mental state going to be like when he's kicking? Um, you know, can he move the same as he used to with all that e- e- excess muscle he's put on? You know, as it stiffened him up? Because McGregor at his best was when he was fighting featherweight and he was loose and he was mm. throwing. Yeah, You never knew what he was throwing. He was throwing a wheel kick to the head. He was, you know, fast, sharp, loose. Um has that stiffened him up? Has he is he still back in like that? He just wants to box type of thing. Um, you know, there's also questions on Chandler where is Chandler just gonna come out and try and have a fight like he's been doing in his last few fights, where he could win a potential fight just by using his strength, which is his wrestling, but he don't. He wants to impress uh-huh. Dan and he wants to yeah. uh, be a fan favorite, and he just comes out and stands in the pocket and swings off. Will he do that? I think he will do that, which gives Chan, which gives McGregor more of a chance. So um, I'm gonna go with McGregor just based on the fact that I like McGregor more. Um, I'm more of a bigger fan of McGregor. It's not. I'm not confident. I'm not confident in my pick because, like I said, he's been out for yeah. too long. Um, there's too many factors coming into the fight um, to have a confident pick. But I'm hoping McGregor. And then, Jake, my, my last question for you, mate. I'd just love to know, when fans think of Jake Hadley, how would you like them to describe you? What do you want fans to say when your name's brought up in conversation? You know, I want them to just, you know, think I'm, I'm, I'm an, an exciting fighter, a guy who comes for the, you know, for, for the finish, you know, um, you know, an exciting fighter to watch, someone to look forward to watching. You know what I mean? Because most of my fights are a finish, um, you know, and they're entertaining fights. So I'd like them to say he's an entertaining in, entertaining fighter. Jake, I've got a few quick fire questions for you, mate, if that's, uh, if that's all right with you. Yeah. Jake, tell me your favourite all-time fighter. Hey, favourite what? All-time fighter. Oh, I've got to say George St. Pierre because uh, because he's a mixed martial artist. Uh, you know, if he if he fights like a Tiago Alves, who's a good striker, he'll take him down and beat him up on the ground. You know, he fights like a Jake Shields, who's really good uh, grappling, he'll keep him up on the feet. He's a true mixed martial artist with a high fight IQ. Um, you know what I mean? So he's my favourite fighter of all time. Um you know, I mean, he was the one, like, my dad was always saying when I was a kid, make sure you're watching George St. Pierre. You know what I mean? And and copy him. If you're copying him, you ain't going too wrong. You know what I mean? So he was, um, he's my favourite all-time fighter. Saying that, I also like my favourite all-time as well as Mamid Ali, um, you know, for what he did outside the ring um, and his accomplishments in the ring as well, you know, beating, like, Sonny Liston, Foreman, Fraser... You know, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Um, you know, he had a high fight IQ as well. So yeah, also got like favorite fighters from when I was younger as a kid, where you know, that was my favorite fighter at that time. But my favorite fighter of all time is Jules St. Pierre or Mamid Ali. What's your all time favorite knockout in the history of the UFC? <clears throat> I mean that's an odd one because like you could say like you know like some some knockouts like um, Edson Barbosa Terry Atom that's like <laughs> good, that's like good on the eye you know what I mean mm. um, then you've also got knockouts well which I suppose is also good on the eye but I've got more si- significance in history. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, like um, the one just happened, just Israel Adesanya Pereira. Yeah. It's got it probably ain't so a pleasing on the eye compared to Edson Barbosa Terry Etten, but it has more significance in history of MMA. Yeah. Um, 
But if we're gonna go off the eye, I'm gonna say Edson Barbo is a Terry Yeah. Great. No, that's a, that's that's a great one. We did like a list of of knockouts that we loved recently, and I think my top one was uh, again. It's just because aesthetically on the eye, it was so good. The uh, Joaquin Buckley one, where Impa Kasanga and I caught oh, yeah. his foot, and then he just spun around and kicked him in, and you're just like, oh my god, that was unbelievable. Yeah, that's a great one, and you know, like you got that. Obviously, Machita versus Randy Katorni. Oh, yeah. Like the Karate Kid, you know, after the movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he switched it and hit him straight in the face. I mean, that was good on the iron also. I think that was Randy Katorni's last fight in the UFC. So yeah. that has been significance as well. So um, there's been lots of great knockouts. But right. I like Jimmy Cadley versus Malcolm Gordon. That was a good I one. I like that one too. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Last question for you, mate. Last question. Jake. Who is going to be the next UK fighter to become a UFC champion? Um, you know, I am definitely going to be a UFC world champion. Um, you know, I could be the next UFC world champion. In a way, you know, I kind of, you know, I thought Arnold had a chance of being the next one. Yeah. He's still like a possibility of being the next one because he's so close to the belt, also Aspinall. He's so yep. close to the belt, so he could be the next one. Um, it's hard to say, really, because obviously the, the divisions are so hard with Volkanovski being the champion at featherweight and John Jones being the champion at heavyweight. So, um, But one thing for damn sure I can say that I will be the champion of the world. Um, I, you know, I want to say hopefully I'm not the next one. Hopefully someone can get there before me, but I don't want to say that as well. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. Um, you know, maybe if Arnold gets a few more wins together, uh, he can be the next one. But I'm sure I'm going to be a champion myself. Wonderful. Perfect stuff, place man. to finish. Jake, thank you so much for your time today, mate. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, no worries, man. Thank you. Cheers, mate.